Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and Hotfix 5.2.5 has come out, which is kind of weird. I don't think we've ever gotten to point fives before, but there are a few fixes. So yeah, let's just jump right in. There's campaign and battle. So for campaign, we've got a few bits here. Skills first. The blue scribe skill, Xenia's quest doors, now correctly modifies the assassinate action rather than wound, which they did not have. Cool. Settlements. Special settlements, example, Altdorf, Karazakarak, basically all the named capitals, I guess, will now correctly use the Wood Elf settlement battle map when occupied by Wood Elves. Cool. Uh, environment. Fixed an issue where the edges of the Great Canal South Cafe appear jagged. The canal should now display smoothly. Okay, so... Okay, that's interesting. Map changes for South Cafe. Interesting. It could be nothing, but obviously we are expecting a map change when it comes to the DLC in the future, so that could be preparing for that. Uh, fixed an issue in the Lost Valley, where building assets for a landmark near the building of Oxil were visible despite being covered by the fog of war. Okay. And text localization. Fixed an issue where the Korean translation of library was incorrect, displayed a symbol, is now being corrected, to Horse House. And fixed an issue where Lord's name and visions of the Old Ones mission panel was not localized. Okay. I mean, that's not too bad. All right, and now the bigger changes are coming in with battle. The AI has been improved in choke point battles to prioritize moving swiftly through choke points when under fire, rather than reforming or trying to cross while in formation. This enhancement increases the overall challenge and reduces the dominance of artillery and range units in these scenarios. Okay, this is good. Okay, that's actually really, really good. So for those of you who haven't really been seeing a lot of choke battles, because they're just very rare in Warhammer 3 when compared to Warhammer 2, uh, yeah, they would just stay in formation all the time, walk up to the point where the choke point is, and then break in. So in some cases, if you were playing with dwarfs and stuff, yeah, it was just ridiculous because you could basically kill off an enemy army by the time that they kept reforming and so on before they get to you, and it's just not realistic. Uh, let's move on. Fixed disabled AI skirmish mode for isolated units. It will now be disabled only when it is clear that the unit will lose, preventing unnecessary prolongation of the battle. So enemies will skirmish less if they know that they're going to lose near the end and stuff, I'm imagining? Ultimately, this should be a good thing because there have been cases where I've been chasing around a skirmish unit where most of the other army is dead, but still I'm chasing this one specifically and it's just it's just not ending. It's just super weird. So it's good to see. You know, the AI fixes are always quite good. And then finally, we've got for AI fixed an issue where AI controlled units were moving chaotically in some quest battles while incorrectly waiting for reinforcements. Yeah, this is a weird thing where the formation just kept breaking and reforming and then breaking again. Let's move on to environment. We've asked the flying trees in the Dwarf Mountains to calm down, thereby resolving an issue with them floating above the ground during battles. There's a few maps like that. It's super weird. Uh, I guess it's because maybe when the game got ported over, because obviously those battle maps were from Warhammer 1, then Warhammer 2, and then Warhammer 3, some of the assets started floating. There's rocks too. At least Creative Assembly have been committed to fixing it, because whilst it doesn't really fix anything gameplay-wise, it's immersion, seeing flying trees and flying rocks and stuff. It's just odd. Uh, let's continue. Nangao is no longer affected by random fires, and specific assets have been grounded properly. Nice. Fixing the issue where they were now floating above the battlefield. This is really, really good. Hopefully, we're getting closer to fixing up the rice field stuff, because the lag still becomes a bit of an issue there. It could actually just be linked to flying objects. And then, fix an issue on the shifting monolith map where the camera could move under the lava fall, revealing unintended areas of the map. Yes, that's something that happens to a few of the chaos maps. Uh, it's just literally void below it because that's how those maps are created, but it's still kind of annoying. And then units, fixed black spots on the chaos sorcerers caused by transparency maps being turned off at different levels of detail. Uh, fixed an issue where the parts of the marauders of corn armor would disappear during lod errors. Yes, that's something that is really, really weird. And finally, fix the visual issue with the inner walls of the cabins on the Thunder Barge and the Spirit of Grungate. It doesn't say what it is, but hey, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's not supposed to be a big thing. These hotfixes are getting smaller, but it can be imagined that they're so busy working on 5.3 that, yeah, they're just not putting too much into the hotfix other than fixing issues which are annoying or need to be fixed right away. I think that's perfectly fine. Good to see commitment to making sure that they're consistent and that's a big thing, especially with how things were last year. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of discussion and I'll see you all again very, very soon, guys. Have a great day.